hello everyone my name is precious peculiar and welcome back to my youtube channel i hope you enjoyed my last video on hearing from god how to hear from god concerning any issue how to hear god by yourself by yourself concerning any issue the reason why i did i made that video was because i've been seeing a lot of things lately and like people are confused that ah, this person is saying this this person is saying that see i can <laughs> i can say now that it's not see everybody you should believe it's not see everybody you should listen to so i'm teaching you to hear god by yourself so when so and so person comes and says this when even me when i come and say this you can check it with god you can check it with the word of god you can check it with god and you can be sure for yourself so you don't get led astray and you do not start experiencing church hurt there's something called church hurt um and like you're just just being hurt against the body of christ because you feel they're leading you astray so you learn how to hear god by yourself learn how to hear god by yourself this is not to say that everybody that is coming on here is saying nonsense this is not to say that even me that i'm coming on here i'm saying nonsense no i ensure that god instructs me to say anything before i come and say it because i know that his children are precious and i cannot be an irresponsible watchman over his children so just for you to learn by yourself so you don't be confused so you don't like just follow everything and so you are not led astray so you're not led astray so that's why that was the purpose of that video and i hope you gained a lot from it and i hope you start practicing it in your life and i trust that god will help you in the name of jesus so this new video today is myths about hearing from god myths about hearing from god like what are the things that don't necessarily mean that you have heard or what are the things that are like see this thing in your process of hearing from god this is not going to happen if it happens then it's not good like myths basically and i'm also going to be saying the facts like this is the kind of thing that can happen when it is god that is speaking to you and the things that i see if you see that one red flag it's not good so i pray you are blessed by this video please watch to the end share with as many as possible and i see god helping you and i see you going your spiritual life in jesus name god bless you number one you will always feel good about yourself all the time no okay let me say the myth again you will always feel good like about yourself like i've heard good <sighs> feel good <laughs> no it's not going to happen like that all the time because most times sometimes when god speaks to you you, you might feel bad because if it's in a correction you might feel bad you might feel not like you feel down and sad and depressed no but you might feel bad you might feel remorseful you might feel remorseful so it's not every time that you will feel good about it and another another reason why it's not every time you feel good about it is because like sometimes the instructions god has god will give you as he's speaking to you they might not be things you necessarily like to do there might not be things you necessarily like to do so you might not always feel good about it but you still have to be anyways so that's one myth that you always feel good about it it always lift up your mood you always you always have joy so there's a difference between joy peace like there's a difference between having peace of mind and feeling good feeling good is based on the moment but joy you always have the joy of the lord because you know that this correction that god is giving me he's giving me because he loves me and in fact it's a child that they, that 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 is loved that he corrects if you're not being corrected you are not loved that's just the truth if you're not being corrected you're not loved if you're not being corrected by somebody you are not loved you are not loved so that is one that is that 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 has been one myth i've seen like you always feel good like yeah god has spoken to me not all the time because it can be correction it can be it can be god even if you are a friend of god it can be god even like sharing his burdens with you and if god is sad how do you want to be happy so basically okay so another myth is that when god speaks when god is speaking to you you always tremble in fear like you will always be afraid like ah something bad is happening not all the time not all the time i know there are some places in the bible where they will be like god came and they all trembled in fear but this is where i'm going with this god has not given you the spirit of fear god has not given you the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind god has not given you the spirit of fear but of power of love and of a sound mind i've noticed this a lot even in my interpretation of dreams when i dream something when i have a dream and i'm trying to interpret it with the help of the holy spirit i always knew my the first is this saving point now the first litmus test 
was I afraid during the dream? Was I afraid during the dream? If I was afraid, I've already sidelined this that this dream is not from God. Because God will never give you anything that has fear. Because I mean, God loves you so much. Why will you be sleeping in the night and, go, and, and God will come and just give you one dream that you now wake up? I'm afraid this is going to happen. Uh, it is not going to put fear in you. The situation you see in the dream, God might tell you something that is going to happen in the future. That that, that thing might be bad, quite alright. But it's not necessarily going to put fear in you. Instead, it's going to rouse up faith in you and give you the ability to pray over that situation that you have seen. Because that's why God shows you dreams in the first place. Shows you things to come. Good or bad do it shows you things to come. But even the things to come, whether they are good or bad, they will not put fear in you. So if you are if you are afraid, just know that it's from the devil. The God God will never speak to you and you'll be afraid. And you'll be afraid and always trembling in fear. No. No. Even when even when those angels, angels in the Bible come to talk to people and they, they start with fear not because God does not want you to be afraid. Fear not because you have found favor with the Lord's side. Fear not because this, this, and this will happen by this and this time. Fear not, fear not. So, God is not here to put fear in you. So, if anything you have, any voice you are hearing that is always putting fear in you, that's no God. That's no God. God is not is not on the side of fear, always wanted to make his children afraid. No, that's no God. So, that's another myth that you'll be afraid and you'll be trembling. No, that's not true. That's no God. The myth is that you will always hear a voice. You will not always hear a voice. I'm coming somewhere. You will not always hear a voice. If you notice, my previous videos where, where I talk about hearing from God, the first one I did about a long time ago now, let's say like, should be five months or four months ago, where I was talking about why it seems you are no more hearing God. I did not say the why, why you are no more hearing the voice of God. Why, why are you no more hearing the voice of God? Because even this one I just did now, how to hear God concerning any issue, how to hear God by yourself concerning any issue. I don't say how to hear God's voice. It is not every time you will hear the voice. You are hearing me. You are able to understand what I'm trying to pass across. Does not mean I'm always speaking with words. Does not mean you're always hearing a voice. God can speak through his word. His word, it, it is communicating to you. It is communicating to you and your situation. But you're not necessarily hearing a voice like somebody is saying some. Somebody is saying something not quite all right. God is saying something, but you are not. It is not always audible. Ah, thank you, Father. That, that's just it. It is not always audible like somebody came and like you heard like you heard heard the way you are hearing my voice now. It is not always audible. It will not always be audible. It will not always be audible. Like. As a matter of fact, like the, the, the primary way by which God leads is his word. And his word is not also audible. Or the inward witness is not also audible. It's a, it's a knowing on the inside of you. It's like something as it's as if the way I, the way sometimes the way my inner witness works is as if God has dropped the answer in my spirit since. Me, I'm just picking it up. Like me, I'm just picking up the signal. Like he has said it since. But I'm just picking up the signal. Like it's not as if is I like ah Father Lord. It is not it's not always a voice it's not always going to be audible it's not always going to be audible and this is what this is one like the devil uses to trick people to trick the children of god because they always he makes them believe that it must always be a voice they must always hear a voice a voice said this a voice said that sometimes it will just be a knowing it will just be a knowing so the devil makes you think that god always speaks in a voice in an audible voice you you have a problem if you're not hearing an audible voice which is a lie which is a lie which is a lie if you're not if you have never heard the audible voice of god you don't have a problem my dear you are fine there's nothing wrong with you if you have never heard the audible voice of god if you have never heard the audible voice of god there is nothing wrong with you it does not mean that there is something wrong with you you are perfectly fine nothing is wrong do you understand nothing is wrong with you so the devil the devil puts people in a rat race and lets them to continually chase voices like they want to hear they always want to hear something you know ah, i just want to hear something let me go to this man or go let me go to this prophet i just want to hear let me just always hear let me just hear let me hear the voice of god through them let me just hear i just want to hear something you just you shall just want to hear you, do, you don't necessarily have to hear with an audible voice he can speak through his word. He can speak through and through 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 your inward witness. He may speak through your conscience. It's not, it does not necessarily have to be audible. So when you start seeking voices, trust me, you will hear. You will hear something. And most times, the devil will take advantage of that and ensure that you hear the wrong things. 
the devil will take advantage of that and start speaking to you and you you there your innocent self no you're not necessarily innocent your ignorant self will not be there and thinking that ah, there's nothing wrong with you there's nothing wrong with you don't let don't don't let your search for a voice i want to hear a voice a voice now now lead you into familiar spirits because these are some people get initiated i'm serious this is not people get initiated you will not start looking for a familiar spirit a familiar voice you shall want to hear something it does not necessarily have to be audible it doesn't have to be audible it doesn't have to be audible the primary way is the word of god but some people are lazy to actually sit down with the word of god and understand what god is saying the other just let me just hear a voice here let me just hear a voice god just speak to me i want to hear your voice oh god i told you that's good that that story of of kenneth Higgins, that of the one of the books one of the one of the one of his books that i read where he was like was like god if you could just speak to me if you could just show me if you could just give me this confirmation god told me that that is all you're going to get like i was spoken to you finish like that is all <laughs> that is all you're going to hear so you get up and go and do we can't do what i've asked you to do who's looking for an audible voice if you seek voices the devil will give you what you want if you seek voices the devil will give you what you want don't seek voices god does not always speak in an audible voice that he that he does that you have never heard the audible voice of god does not mean that your spiritual work here is k-legged does not mean that you're not it does not mean that god does not know you does not mean that you're not saved it's just a lie from the devil and devil would not want to start putting his own voice putting his own voice he not start following the devil and that will not be your portion in jesus name so that is a big myth god does not always speak in an audible voice it does not necessarily have to be a voice that you hear. You hear it on your spirit. It's as if somebody told you. It's as if, it's as if you you knew it since. Your spirit knows it. Your spirit knew it. So you're like, it's as if you knew it since. You're just, you're just bringing it into your remembrance. That's how, that's, how I feel the, that's, that's how the inward witness works. It's a knowing. You just know. You know. You don't necessarily hear it. You know. You know. Praise God. So God knows always speaking an audible voice. God will always speak in an audible voice. That's another myth. Another myth is that the way in which God started speaking to you, like when you first got saved and how he was speaking to you, that's the only way he will forever used to speak to you to you die. <laughs> Let me explain. Like the way in which God started speaking to you is the only way by which he will speak to you to the end of your life on this journey, on this earth. That's not true. Like if you when, when you first give your life to Christ, if you are seeing dreams and God, you were just dreaming, you were a dreamer, you were a seer, you see visions, you just see things. God speaks to you with like with your eyes, you see things. It does not mean that that is the only way by which you will hear God throughout your life. God is dynamic. That you are seeing dreams this year does not mean that next year you still see dreams. It doesn't mean that God has just has stopped talking to you. It just means that He has changed His medium by which He is speaking to you. So when God changes the medium by which He speaks, by, by which He speaks to you, in order for you not to be left behind, what do you do? You follow Him and find the medium by which He is speaking to you next. You learn it, you master it, and you continue hearing God. But some people, because they have the mentality that ah, I'm a dreamer, I'm meant to dream forever, and I'm not dreaming now, something is wrong with me. That's not true. Like at the beginning of your work with God, you might just start with just the word. You just enjoyed reading your Bible. It's not that as you have grown in God now, you have stopped reading your Bible. But the, the there are some specific things that is not just from the word of God. You are seeing it. You can see writings on the wall. It is, it is not. It is not fetish. It is not demonic. You can see things on the wall. See things that other people around you are not seeing. You can. You can. God can speak to you through things in the sky you can just i'm serious like different things you god can speak to you in different ways so what i'm saying in essence is that don't limit god don't put god in a box you're not the one that will determine how we speak to you so you cannot say that god i'm no more dreaming you give me a dream i don't want that one i want dream i want a dream give me a dream i want to sleep now and see something you can always ask for that you cannot always ask for that. You can ask for it, depending on your level of relationship with God. But even still, you, even if your relationship with God is the, you cannot still always ask for that because God is the one that will tell me how He wants to speak to you. And some people are lazy; they just want the norm because they started with, started with, start, they don't want to be wind because they started with you on a particular path, and now He's leading in another direction. You don't want to take the effort. You don't want the stress. You don't want. You don't want. The, you don't want to work it out. You don't want to work 
to get into that to the next level he wants to take you to some people just like the word of god because they've already memorized all the old scriptures that, that talk about god and then all the promises they don't want another way because that one is just easy they already know it they don't want to leave their comfort zone and if you don't want to leave your comfort zone you you, you might just stop hearing you might just stop hearing because god is drawing you god is drawing you to other ways but you are keeping him in a box that god this is the only way that is started with you with dreams and visions does not mean that you will continue seeing dream, dreams and visions. That is started with you with just the inward witness that you just know. But that is always sending people to you does not mean that if he does not send people to you again, doesn't mean that he's no more speaking to you. There's another way. And this is another thing the devil uses too. Because like, some people just, when something does not just happen once or twice, or even if it's four times, it does not happen. Like when you pray for something, it does not happen. You just give up you just pack up and say that's the end god's almost speaking to me again there's something wrong in my life something 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 that's not true that is not true what just it does not mean god has stopped god has stopped speaking to you they are no more seeing that used to dream before and no more seeing dreams that used to that used to hear hear have an inward that used to hear the audible voice of god before and you're no more hearing the audible voice of god now does not mean that god has stopped speaking to you does not mean that God has stopped speaking to you. Don't be ignorant. It does not mean that God has stopped speaking to you. God just wants to draw you to another level. God just wants to draw you to another. God just wants to. He just wants you to learn something different. He might not have changed his medium of speaking to you in this season of your life. In every season of your life, there's something God wants you to learn. There's also how He wants you to hear what He wants to what He wants to teach you. There's something he wants you to learn. There's something he wants you to see. But there's also some. There's all. There, there may also be a new way by which by which he wants to teach you those things that he wants to teach you. So you must be open to hear and learn and receive whichever way he chooses to give you. Don't put God in a box. If you put God in a box, you're going to limit. You're going to limit his workings in your life. You're going to limit the way, the level at which he can use you. You're going to limit the dimensions at which he can you, he can use you. You're going to limit yourself. You will limit yourself. You will just you are shortchanging yourself. Don't limit yourself. Don't limit God too. Don't limit God. Any way He wants to speak to you, He can. So be ready. Be ready. And that you know they are no more hearing God in a particular way in which you should hear him before. Does not mean that anything is wrong with you. Does not also mean that God hates you now. He has stopped speaking to you. No. He's still speaking to you. Be since you can't even ask him. God, I used to see dreams. God, yet I've not dreamt in like two months now. I know there's nothing wrong. If I thought there's something wrong, I ask for forgiveness. I, I I bring myself back to your presence again. So now, God, how do you? How are you speaking to me? In what way do you want me to learn? In what way are you, What is your new way of communication? I'm at. I must let me help me to adapt to you, because God. People always think that God is the one that will be changing shape. To fit your situation, you my dear, you will you will come by yourself. So you're not ready. You are not ready. You will bring yourself and come. God, how are you doing this thing now? God, what is the new way? God, I see that there has been a change. So what's up? What's going on? You ask God. You ask Him. You ask Him. It doesn't mean that He has stopped speaking to you. So don't put yourself in a box. Don't put God in a box. And don't just the time. Don't just you're not the one that will determine how He's going to speak to you. If He changes His way, you follow Him to how He's going. Follow Him in the in the direction He's taking taking you to. Follow Him in the direction He's taking you to. They used to hear audible voices before. They used to hear him clearly before. And you have stopped now. It does not mean that something is wrong with you. Praise God. So I want you to understand that. I want you to understand that. I want you to be more sensitive. Be more sensitive. Be more sensitive. Be more sensitive to how he's speaking to you. I see God helping us in Jesus' name. So that's a myth. That, that was another myth. That how he started with you is how it's going to end. No, not really. Not really. A particular medium might not always be the medium forever by which he communicates with you. So adapt and learn. Basically. Yes. So another thing I want to point out here is that perhaps like you just gave your life to Christ and like God has just been with you. Like you've been hearing him very very well. Not necessarily not not necessarily audible, but like you myself, you are surprised with the frequency at which you are hearing God as per multiple times in a day because you're speaking to you life is just sweet you're just being led and everything is just beautiful and they and as you are growing it seems as if god is withdrawing follow me it seems as if god is withdrawing and it seems as if it's not as frequent again that you are hearing from him it seems as if god has left it seems as if 
it's almost speaking to you in the ways okay i know i've talked about it in one of the meets I've, I've mentioned in this video like it's not okay it's not the way but it's not it's not it's not the way it's, it's not it's not speaking the way you used to speak it before and he's not he's not as frequent he's not as loud you are not also as sure he's not he's just dwindling he's not as standard like yes go talk to me i'm very sure yeah I, right now you may not be sure again or you might not be you might not be as frequent as you used to be you might not also be in the same way it used to be as 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 far as, as when you first give your life to christ this is also something i experienced when i first give my life to christ like sharp sharp i was like hey nami go go they speak to you like this oh my they go everyone what are they doing again <laughs> don't be like me don't be like me like that aspect of me don't be like me so basically i was like i was so happy because like i, I didn't expect it like God was speaking to me so well, so audible. Like it was just life was just beautiful at the beginning. Then when I was growing, it came a time when um, I was not hearing anything again. I could go days like I literally did not hear nothing from God, nothing. If not, if not that I know scripture before, if not that I memorized that scripture before, I would have been blank of the word of God until Sunday when I for church. Like I wasn't hearing again. I wasn't hearing again and I was so sad about it. like I wanted to put the whole world on my head like I was sad I was disturbed and I was like God I'm not hearing you again what did I do what did I do I said for God, I, I confess all these things I'm not commenting if I confess everything <laughs> I was praying 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 God please speak to me God please speak to me this 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 is that I was just all over the place I was sad I was not I uh, thought I was losing my mind I was not okay I, I was sad like, it was not I did not like it again because I'm like God, why did you leave me? I just came to you. I just I just came back to the kingdom, and I, you were speaking to me so well. Now no more speaking to me again. What did I do? I I'm, I did not sin against you. I mean, what did I do? Am I doing something wrong? I was just I I became a time I even came angry like God's not speaking to me. I'm not speaking. I'm not going to pray again. I'm burning my face. One thing I learned, okay, do, I did, go, like I went to a conference during that period of time when I was still confused and I was just sad and all over the place. I went to a conference and like God just used this woman of God, Pastor Mrs. Funke Obaji. God just used that to just answer my question. Apparently, she went through the same thing when she, when she like when she when she just gave her life to Christ. And I could and I could relate so much because she also she was also a medical student. She also studied medicine and like everything she was just saying was like God, this woman is just <gasps> God sent you. <laughs> so as she was just speaking and I was just relating, and one thing she said that really caught my attention was like. When God is when God has been speaking to you so well at the beginning, and now it seems as if He's withdrawing, and it seems as if He's no more talking to you, He simply just wants you to come closer. God may have been running away, not like running away as far God wants to run away and disappear from your life. No, He may have been running away and detaching Himself. Why? Because He wants you to come closer. Like I mean, you just came to the kingdom and you got it so easy. Like you're just hearing so easily, so plainly. You do not do anything to deserve. Don't ask if we do anything to deserve hearing from God. If you hear my, if you listen to my the video I made on how to hear God by yourself concerning anything, you should know that you are a son. So you should not beg to actually hear from God. You shouldn't beg to actually hear from God. As I said, don't don't do like me. You should not beg to hear from God. But basically, what you're trying to say is that as God was withdrawing, He wants you to come closer. He wants you to take. He wants to take you into deeper depths. Like He wants you to learn more of Him. He wants you. To, he wants to teach you some more. He wants to teach you some more. He wants you to learn more of him. As he's telling you to come closer, what does he want to do? He wa- as, as, he's, as he's withdrawing himself, he wants you to come closer. See, see it like this. Like, God is playing hide and seek with you. God is playing hide and seek with you. Hide and seek as far well. as he's hiding himself and doesn't want you to find him. No. He said in his word, seek me why, why I can be found. Like, God, wa- God wants to be found by you. Like, you see, it's just like a love play. It's just like it's just like hide and seek. I'm running away from you. Oh no, I'm here. Don't come. Like I'm here. No, no, don't come here. Do, do you understand? <laughs> I'm trying to explain this thing in a very simple way. It's not as if God is running away, but he's running away. It's not like he's running away, but he's running away. He's running away because he wants you to come. You have been in your comfort zone so easily. You never even pray in the morning. God has given you 10 instructions for the day. Your life is sweet. God has showed you things that are coming out in the exam. Your life is sweet. <laughs> God has like 
it's just so easily it's not as if he wants your life to be hard but he wants you to come closer into into a deeper relationship with him it's like hide and seek i'm going here because I, what, what do i what am i going here why you see little children playing hide and seek they don't really know how to play hide and seek what are they doing i'm coming here like i'm gonna come and catch me i'm running here come and catch me do you understand like he's going there he wants you he wants you to come and meet him there it's just like love play i'm going there i want you to come and meet me there i'm going here i want you to come and meet me there so i'm just it's not if i'm using you to play like i go it's not if god is just using you to play and just joking with your life no but he just he just wants you to come he wants you to come into a, a deeper level of intimacy with him he wants you to learn more of him he wants you to know more of him he wants you to understand that his distance is not because he hates you his distance is not because you did anything wrong he just wants to play with you basically he loves you and he just wants to play with you see it as a love play he's going here let me go too he's doing this let me do too he's running here say don't come, come there do you understand <laughs> this is my example is so this thing but i try my best to explain the word of god very simply it's simple you can you can grasp so if you just give your life to christ and you're like god was all over me now nah, i'm not even feeling god again i wake up in the morning i feel empty God is just it's just an invitation for more. It's just an invitation to come closer. It's just an invitation to come and learn more. It's just an invitation to love more. Because God be like, ah, wow, wow, we've been too strict. Let's come and play. Let's come and have fun. Basically, God loves you. Like you need to understand. May the Holy Spirit help you understand the level at which God loves you. God loves you. He just wants to bring you to deeper fellowship, deeper relationship. Not because He wants to make your life hard. Not because He does not want to speak to you again. But He because he, because He wants He wants to use you. So as He's drawing you nearer to Him, He wants He wants to draw you nearer to Him so that you can go out for Him. He wants to get you into a deeper level of relationship, a deeper level of intimacy, so that you can do what so you can go out for him. So see it as a love play. See it as hide and seek. It does not mean he hates you. That answered my question and made me feel more loved by God. Like God loves me so much. Like when I heard that from her, like it just made me understand that God, wow, like wow. Wow, basically wow. I I was wowed. It's not because you have sinned. It's not because anything is wrong with you. God is just saying, come closer. Then I go here again. Still come. Then I go here again. Still come. Shall be coming, shall. Wherever I'm going to, just come. And you will see how you are your relationship with God. He wants you to chase him. He wants you to chase him. He wants you to chase him. I mean, people like being chased. People like being chased. Like, people don't, nobody likes nobody likes and it's just so easy to get you people likes being people like being chased people like being chased god likes being chased because they come and chase me come and know of me and you see you have fun on the journey because like it's just so lovely it's beautiful it's just beautiful like it will blow your mind when i when i learned of this i was like wow wow and i said chasing god with more intentionality and it was just beautiful it's still beautiful like it's amazing so keep chasing god keep chasing him and and with as as he's going 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 like that and when you now hit like i don't mean like hit god but like when you when you catch him like the level of fulfillment it can't be explained it can only be experienced so experience that for yourself if you feel that god has withdrawn you to go don't be rebellious like me in the beginning and say that God is not speaking to me. I mean, I'm not praying. <laughs> you are doing yourself. <laughs> you yeah. <laughs> so don't 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 be like that. Don't be like that. Don't be like ah, God was my friend. I don't know what I did to him now. He's not more talking to me. It's because God like God kind of brought himself to our level. Basically, she not actually be talking to God like that. The King of Kings, the Lord of Lords. You understand? But because he loves you, he's still a friend. Even as he's a father, he's still a friend. Even as he's your creator, he's still your friend. That's why that's why it has been that gotten to that level. So continue chasing him. As he's going now, you start asking the question, where are you going to? Follow. Wherever it is, follow. Okay? Chase God. And you will enjoy yourself while chasing God. I promise. Okay, so another myth about hearing from God is that you have everything you need to carry out the instruction. Like, let's say God tells you to do something now. Like, a myth here is that you have everything you need to do that thing. 
which is not always true. See, God will give you impossible things to do. Like, basically, it is possible with him, but with you, it is impossible. So that everybody will know in the end that it was God. So that everybody will know in the end that it was God. Because God wants to take all the glory. He wants to take all the glory. God can tell you to do something that involves, like, let's say, 100 million. And you and God know that. You only have 100,000 naira in your account. And you'll be like, God, what? Like, how? Like, what are we doing here? What is going on? How on earth is this thing going to happen? It's because God wants you to trust Him. So it's not every time that He speaks to you that you will have everything in place. Because some people will be like, ah, 100 million care. Ah, man, no get that kind of money. You then can't be God that's speaking to me. Because God knows me now. God knows what I have. Yes, God knows what you have. God knows that you have nothing. But He wants you to, he wants you to depend on Him for everything. So that after after everything has been said and done, see, everybody will know that it was God. God wants to take all the glory. So everybody will know that, see, this man could not have done this thing by himself. God did that. Like, do you get God did that. God did that. God wants to take all the glory. He wants to take all the glory concerning every aspect of your life. So don't now just push things off that ah, it can't be God that said that because you don't have the money. It can't be God that it can't be God that said that because you don't have the resources. It can't be God that said that because you don't have the connections. Maybe God, God, God might be like, I want to take you, I want to take you outside the country and just be like, ah, that can't be God though. It's the devil. He wants to make me miss road. The devil wants to make me miss road because you do you are saying that because you don't have the money. And don't always dismiss things like that because you are not you don't have the capability to bring them to pass. It is God that is saying it because uh, that's another reason why you that's another like should I say little more steps to know that it was even God that spoke to you. A man cannot say that. Not every man can tell you that that they, that they, that they will do that kind of thing for you. Because not everybody, not every man has the means to do that thing, to, to take you outside the country. Not every man has the means to pay your fees. Not every man has the means to, to do big things like that. Not every man has the means. So that's why you know it was God. So don't dismiss these things. So a myth here is that you always have everything in place. Everything will be all figured out. Everything will be fine. Everything will be just right. Everything will be just perfect. It is a lie. God will take you out of your comfort zone. Out of your comfort zone. And to also show everybody that it was him that did this thing. Because you yourself, everybody, you know you can't do it. You know you can't do it. Praise God. So don't just dismiss things like that. That can't be God. I can't even do that for where I, it's not God. God is telling you those things because he wants you to believe in him as the one, as the provider, as the one that will carry it out, as the one that will bring it to pass. So don't just dismiss things like that. So it's a myth that you always have everything figured out. Look at Abraham. Abraham did not have everything figured out. He did not even know where he was going to. God said, say, pack your load, pack your wife, pack your cousin, I'll be your, your nephew, pack yourself and be going. And him to just woke up and was going. He did not know he did not know what he did not know anything and he was just going. That's the kind of faith, that's the kind of level God wants to bring us into. So don't just dismiss things that can't be God. Ah no. I should just leave. Ah, that can't be God. So that's a myth. It can be God. Praise God. So another myth here is that God will always speak to you in majestic ways. Like as pa. Like supernatural, like he came down from the sky and said, my daughter, my daughter, my son, my son. <laughs> no, I've said this for over and over again. No, it is not always going to be like that. If I are always waiting for that, you're going to wait a long time because it will most likely not happen like that. At all, at all, at all. We're not, it's not a fairy tale. We're not using God to do abracadabra. We're not using God to do um, this thing. What's that? Cinderella, bibidi bobidi boo. No. <laughs> It's not like that. That's that's that is not that is not God is not it is not always it is not it is we're not joking. Because people just think this take this as a joke. We are not joking. You are intending in your heart to hear from your heavenly father, right? About something important in your life. That is why you're coming to him to ask for directions, ask for instruction, and be and you're waiting for an answer. So don't don't joke about everything and be and you, you that way. When you always wanting it to be something big or massive, magnificent, you will miss the point. You will miss it because that's not what that's not what God that, Father Lord help us. Help me to explain this thing. It is not always going to be extraordinary and magnificent. Angels are not always going to come from the sky. God's not, not God's not always going to send lightning and thunder. There's not always going to be rain. 
it is not always going to be like that. Why am I saying always? As if no, it occurs commonly. It is not like that. It is not like that. If you keep looking for the big, big things, you miss what God is doing in the small, small things. See, any inanimate object around you, never like underestimate it. I'm not saying you should start the um, worshiping objects around you. No, but never underestimate anything. God can speak to you through your, through your, through your phone, through your Bible, anything. It's not like as if what He's saying to you. Like there's a time like let's say God t- talk to me about spoke to me through my water bottle. It's not as if the water bottle exactly had anything to do with what He was telling me. But like as I looked at my water bottle, I immediately knew that God is stay, God is saying something to me. God was reminded me of something. So if you are there looking for lightning and looking for rain to fall. <laughs> seriously, seriously. And this is how some people really think. Some people don't actually some people are not actually joking. This is how they really think. They feel that that is how it must happen. So because that's not happened to them or anybody in their family, that means none of them in their family have ever heard from God. Them so they never heard from God. Because when they're praying, rain and rain did not fall, lightning did not spark, thunder did not sound. It will not always be that. Some people always think that ah, because God is, you know, big, 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 large, 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 large. Everything you should do should be extraordinary. God also does simple things for you. God is present in the simplest of things, in the tiniest of ways, in the ways you can never, you might not even have ever expected. God is present. The simplest of things, the 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 the, the, the tiniest of details. God is present. The littlest things. The littlest things. If you keep looking for what is blah, you will miss what he's doing. And just maybe the reason why you're not getting those big things is because you are desiring it. Don't put God in a box. Don't put God in a box. See, this, this is the only way. I've said this so many times in this video today. Don't be saying that this is the only way. If you're not like this, then no. You are deceiving yourself. You are going to wait a long time. You're going to wait a long time. You're going to just waste your time to waste your time and another thing that people fail to understand here is that that god spoke to somebody in a vision god is trying to pass across the same message to two different people okay the same message to two different people that he spoke to one person through a vision in the night or even in the day open vision they saw it in the sky open vision and just spoke to you through an inward witness it does not mean that the person that i heard through a vision it does not mean does not necessarily mean that 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 the person is better than you because you just heard with an inward witness. You, you might just have heard with the word. Like you just saw it in your Bible and you just knew what God wanted you to do. It does not mean that the person that had a trance or the person that the angel visited them in the night. It does not mean that they are better than you. It does not mean that it is more supernatural. The fact that, that one is, is more like, it's more divine. A vision, a dream, you know, is more divine. It is not true. It is not more divine. It is not better. It is not more amazing. It is not more powerful. It is not more powerful. It is no more powerful. It is as supernatural. And the thing with this is that God will speak to you in a way he knows that you will hear and understand at that moment. So God will not be giving you dreams because probably you don't sleep in the night. <laughs> Just joking. But like God may not be giving you dreams because maybe maybe that is not the best way he thinks. Like Maybe that is not the best way for you to grasp that information. Another person, they might guess it quickly with that dream. Like... God doesn't even need to interpret so that they already know what, what he's talking about. But you, you might not have reached that level. But you might be like, ah, but I, I used to have dream now, I can understand dream. God is the one that would that determines how he's going to speak to you. So you are not the one that will say that God, this, 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 this. You might feel that, ah, dreams, I, should, I, I can't understand dreams now. Why does God think I don't understand dreams? Leave that one. Your main goal eh, is to share here. However, whichever way you hear, as far as you share here, God, right? So leave the medium mouth of it. Some people are so obsessed with the kind of medium in which it comes. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't matter. God speaks to you. He has spoken to you. What is more important is that you do that thing. Because they are hearing from vision and dream. It does not still mean that you carry out that instruction. And the person might just have, might just have seen it from the word of God. The person just have had an, and that person might just have had an inward witness. They might even carry out the instruction. Carry out the thing that God is saying. And the person that saw vision and dream. So who is better? Who is better in this case? So that the best, so obedience is more important than the medium in, in which you receive, right? Obedience is more important than the medium in which you receive. So don't be so hooked up and caught up about the how it how it is coming. It is it is it is it is the obedience that is important. The obedience is important. The obedience is important. So don't now think that someone that ah, the person has, has been seeing visions 
open visions, close vision, whichever kind of vision. Do not think that the person is better than you. Or like you, you're, there's something wrong with your spiritual life. No, no, there is nothing wrong with you. Okay? There's nothing wrong with you. Okay? There's nothing wrong with you. Nothing is wrong with you. So, stick to the way God is speaking to you. Okay, don't stick exactly. Because in, in one of the previous meetings I talked about, I was like, He can change. God can be dynamic. So, as God is changing, you to change with Him. As God is moving, you to move with Him. If He's no more using dream, look like, like follow the way in which He's using now. You might start using His words. Sit with the word. If that's what He's using to speak to you. Whatever you do, ensure that you are moving with God. Ensure you are not left behind. Please clean. So that's the means that it's always be magnificent. It's always be angel coming down. It's a most likely not, not be like that because we're in a generation that is always looking for signs. And there's a scripture in the Bible that says, "What to what to generation that is always looking for signs before you believe." It is not a good thing. It is not a good thing. You must not always see something. Something must not always happen. Eh? It must not always be bam, bam, and be loud. God can be God can speak through the smallest of things, through the littlest of things. So be conscious, be sensitive. Be sensitive. It's even possible that the thing you're asking God for, He has told you since. But you're not sensitive enough to catch it because you're looking for something else. Because you're looking for something. He might have said the answer and you'll be like, ah, push your money. I've said it. I've told you. <laughs> but you are not hearing you. You are not picking it because you are looking for something big. You're looking for something else. Meanwhile, it's just it's true. He, he has spoken to you through that grass. Not like the God has spoke to you, but like he has passed across what he wanted to pass across. And you should understand what he's trying to say. God will speak to you in a way he knows you will grab it and understand it fast. Maybe if he shows you dream now and that has numbers and everything, you're not even able to interpret it. You may not get involved in heresy by looking for people that who are who interpret this thing. God me for people, God entangle yourself with familiar spirits and stuff like that. So God will speak to you in a way he knows that you understand. In the, for your level, how you know how he knows you understand. Praise God. So it's not always going to be extraordinary and wow. No. So watch out for the littlest of things. Praise God. So the last point I have here is you will always get confirmation. Another myth about hearing God is that you will always get confirmation. You will not always get confirmation. God will not always confirm what he says. I know people are like, yes, God will confirm it. God will not always confirm it. From my experience, I'm speaking. From the experience of people that have gone ahead of me, I'm speaking. God will not always confirm what he says, what he tells you to do. Or whatever he says, he will not always confirm it. He will not always confirm it. Like it's not like he will not do. It's not like if God says something, he will not do it. He will definitely do it. He will definitely do what he has said. But what what I mean by he will not confirm is that he might not say it again. Like God does not need to say something twice before first before you obey. He doesn't need to say something twice before you believe. If I believe or if I don't believe, he has said what he wants to say and he's going to do it. So when I say confirmation, I'm not saying that God will not do what he says. God will not always do what he says. No, please. God will always, always and always ever do what he says, right? He will always do what he says. But like he will not always repeat himself. If you're asking God for direction, go or like, yes, direction, and say, God, please, what should I do about this thing? If he tells you something and you, you, you because you don't want to do it, or because you're not, or because you don't just believe. And he might not, he might just be like, and you, maybe because you don't believe or you don't want to do it. You don't want to do it or you don't believe and I say God please confirm your word though. Ah, are you sure it's you? <laughs> Asking God, God, are you sure it's you? It's not as if it's bad to ask, but see God will not always confirm. If he says it once, he will not say it again. Because you heard. Come, come. You know you heard. Two of us know that you heard. So don't don't do like don't do like as if you did not hear. If it's like you don't believe, that's a different case. But don't start doing as if you do not hear because you heard. And most times when you hear once, he's not going to say it again. If you want him to say it again, you can get God angry. As per, am I joking with you? Why, why do you always want him to always repeat himself, always say it again, again and again and again? If it's that you, if, if it's that you do not believe, then go and build your faith. Because if you are always waiting for confirmation, always waiting for God to say what He has already said again, you'll be too slow in this your journey, in this your Christian faith, in this your journey of purpose. You'll be too slow to record any progress. You'll be too slow to record any progress if you are always, always waiting for confirmation. God to say it again. God say it again. God say it again. You'll be too slow. You won't record progress. You won't go anywhere, and you'll not be easily used by God. 
Because God will say something once, expecting to move fast. You see, be there on your knees praying, God, please say it again. Say it again. Just once more, Lord. I told you the story of Kenneth again. I've said that. This is really I thought I was saying it in this video. So he was praying to God about something. He had to. He was on his knees. He kept on cra- praying, crying, begging, God, show me what you are talking about. God, say it again. And God spoke to him. I think this was in an angry voice because you can't go angry. God spoke to him and he was like, God, God was like, I've told you what you need to do. Get up and quit acting like that. Stop acting. Why, why, why are you like, why are you talking? Like, why, why are you crying? Why are you shouting? Stop acting like that. Get up and go and do what I've asked you to do. Because you're not, you're not, that's, that's, that's all the confirmation you're going to get. Me just saying it once. That's all the confirmation you're going to get. That's all the confirmation you are going to get. And let me just share this personal testimony as well because this is something God trained trained me on very early. He trained me not to always wait for confirmation. If he says something once, you are not deaf. You heard. When when God tells you something, and that way by which you can make God happy, Father, I thank you because I just heard you. I thank you because I'm not a dead. I thank you because I'm not a disobedient child. I'm going to carry out this thing now. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to me. Because some people they will hear or they will not, they will not acknowledge the hearing. Acknowledge it. It's just like when your parents are calling you. You heard, you are already coming, but you know what? You know, you know African parents, they still, you must still say ma, you must still say sa, like, you must still, like, you must make them know that you heard. It's the same way with God. How much more, God? Make him know that you heard. Before you obey, say, acknowledge the hearing. God, I've heard you. Thank you for speaking to me. Thank you for speaking to me. I've heard you. Grant me the grace to do. Simple. Don't be there saying, God, say it again. When you want, you want your mom to call you like five times for you now shout, ma. <laughs> That's not right. Same with God. It's not right. Don't always wait for confirmation. This early this year, God told me, Blessed is she that believes. For there shall be a performance of those things that have been told her, not a confirmation. Blessed is she that believes. For there shall be a performance. A performance of those things that have been told her from the Lord. A performance, not a confirmation. A performance, not a confirmation. God will not always confirm it. He will confirm it by doing it. But he will not confirm it by saying it again. He will not always say it again. In fact, you want to you want to turn to those with that 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 that, that the, the I mean you want to be stubborn. How many times do you want to hear something before you do it? You will not always get confirmation. So God will not always confirm it by saying it again. He will confirm it by doing it. Doing what he has said he will do. If it's a promise he gave you. But he will not confirm by telling you to do something again. You are told you are you have heard. So you are playing yourself. Go and do that thing. Just go and do it. Don't, don't stress yourself. Don't, don't stress anybody. Just go and obey. God will not always be give you confirmation. Those are doing like um, this guy in the Bible, Gideon. Those are doing like Gideon in the Bible. Gideon was always waiting for confirmation. He put fleece here, he put clothes here. God, if water should fall on these clothes, then yes, I know that is you. God, if this door should be dry, then I know that is you. <laughs> you want to say, God, if I just come now and this door is open, that is you. Do you know the devil can hear those things that you are saying and come and open the door? A spirit come and open that door. You now say, yes, God, God has opened the door. <laughs> That's why you need to be careful with these things. Don't make confirmation an idol. Don't make confirmation an idol. You wait for everything to be confirmed before you do. You'll be too slow. And God will not use you easily. Because God needs people that act fast. God needs people that don't doubt Him. Can't be doubting every time. God say it again. God say it again. Grow up. Grow up. Grow up. You cannot always be doubting. Grow up. If He says something, take God at His word and go and do it. Take God at His word. Go and do it and let everything be fine. Go and do it. Don't make confirmation an idol. Don't make confirmation an idol. When I hear something, I do it. Do it immediately. Because because the, the another reason why I may not want is because you are always believing that the devil is speaking to you. The, yeah, the devil is not your father. Is the devil your father? Is the devil your father? No, he's not your father. So why do you always believe that? What if it was the devil? What was the, why are you always afraid that it was the devil? Why? Why are you always afraid that it was the devil? Are you having affiliation with the devil? Why are you always why are you always afraid that ah, what if it was the devil? What if it was the devil? See, why are you are always afraid that the devil will take advantage of it. There are so many things that we are doing concerning hearing God, concerning our spiritual life that's allowing God to take that doesn't there's allowing the devil to take advantage of us. Why? Because we don't believe it all boils down to lack of faith. You don't believe that it was God. So you're not asking God again, God was that you. God was that you. God was that you. Devil will not say no. It was not God. It was me. And he will show you that it was him. 
praise God. So like don't always look, don't always look for confirmation. Don't be putting faces here. God, if this happened, then I know it's you. God, if that does not happen, then I know it's not you. Don't do that. Don't do that. The devil can take advantage of those things. Don't let the devil tell me taking advantage of you. And the devil also takes advantage of fear. The devil also takes advantage of fear. I, have a, I already have a recorded video on that. I already have a recorded video on that. And I'm going to release it very soon. The de- like fear creates an atmosphere for the devil to walk. Why are you always afraid that what if it was not God? Why is it always a word? What if it was God? What if it was God? Have you ever thought like that? All those instructions that have been coming your way, all those ideas that you keep throwing inside the doors bin. Have you ever occurred to you that what if it was God? And see all the things I've missed. You should be afraid to disobey God because you, you, think you don't know what you are missing. Like you have no idea. Like it, it's not about me telling you. Like you, you have no idea of what you have missed by disobeying God. You don't. You have no idea of what your generations have missed by disobeying God. And some of these things have no remedy because the season for it has passed. So you should be scared to disobey. Not to put fear in you, but obey God. Obey God. I'm begging you. I always say this. I shout at the top of my lungs. People are like, "Why are you shouting?" Obey God. Obey God. Obey God. It is the only thing you ever learn from me. Yeah. And all my videos in. Ah, please, we should not be so a beg. <laughs> but still, what I'm just trying to say in essence, obey God. Obey God. Obey God. Don't always be afraid. What if it was the devil? What if it was God? Why can't you think like that? Yeah? Why can't you think, what if it was God? And I've been sleeping on all these things because I'm afraid that what if it was the devil that spoke to me? Do you have affiliation with the devil? So why you always think that it's the devil that is speaking to you? You should check yourself, actually. Check yourself. <sighs> Praise God. So don't make confirmation an idol. Don't worship confirmation. Don't wait for things to be confirmed before you move. 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 So that's another myth that you always get confirmation. You will not always get confirmation. And they let you understand that the better it will be for you and the people you are called to help. Praise God. So I think this is where I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you've been blessed. I hope you've been blessed. I hope God has... I know. I know. <laughs> I know that God has spoken to you through this video. Please share, like. I want you to also apply these things in your life. Don't just come and be hearing me every week, every day, and your life is remaining the same. No, it should not be so. Let something change. Act on these things, and you will see. You will see the difference. You will see the difference. Act on these things. I see God helping all of us in Jesus' name. In case you are listening to this video and you are not born again and you don't know Jesus Christ, let me just say a word of prayer with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this ones that are watching this video. There's anyone, God, there's anyone here that does not know you. There's anyone here that has not heard of the gospel. There's anyone that does not know you, Father, Lord God. Touch their hearts in the name of Jesus. Touch their hearts, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Please say after me, Father, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. Thank you, Lord, for who you have made me to be. Thank you, Lord, for who you are making me to be. Thank you, Lord God, for your son, for sending your son to die for my sins. I believe in him. I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of my life. I believe that Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior of my soul. And I accept him into, I accept him into my heart today as my own personal Lord and Savior. Forgive me my sins, Lord. Wash me with your precious blood and grant me the grace to do what pleases you in the name of Jesus. If you just said that prayer of me you are now a child of god congratulations god help you to 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 stay in him god keep you in his view i mean you become all everything that god has destined for you i love you guys and god loves you too bye bye